Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the Man to Man Coverage Podcast. Today, I'm here with my co host, Mason. So, guys. Uh, Mason, how are you uh, holding up today? Doing good, doing good. Uh, got, got a quick update. You know, I always bring my Cardinals merch on to the, the podcast today. Tanner got me the sick case. If you guys can't tell, it's D Hop's uh, Hail Murray catch. It's a pretty cool gift. Uh, it's another another collection to my, you know, all the Cardinals gear. I literally have a Cardinals room, and he has a Carson Wentz Funko Pop. So. <laughs> yeah, here it is. Um, bit of an oof purchase, but you know, we we roll with it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm glad you like your phone case. It was an early birthday yeah. gift, so. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, today's episode will be the pre Super Bowl episode. Next episode we're gonna be talking about that game um and other things but today we have also an exciting video mock draft with the nfl draft coming in april this year i thought it'd be fitting to do a mock draft so today one how this is gonna work is you're gonna see my screen here in just one moment we're basically gonna be taking turns with the picks so i'll be going with pick Number one, the Jaguars, Mason two. Um, this is a pretty good website here, Pro Football Network. Sorry about the advertisements, but oh well. Um, I'll just say for me, I'm not that big of a football college fan. I know some of the top players, but that's about it. I don't watch that many games, but I kind of make my own opinion from what I've seen and from other people. Mason, I don't know about you, where you are for college football, but I don't watch it a ton. Um, no, I, I watch a good bit. Um, I know a good amount of prospects. Like at the beginning of the year, I really don't know. But as the college season and football season goes along, I kind of get more knowledge just based on other people or just watching games. And I just get more knowledge on the prospects. But I watch college football a good bit. That's good. So you have more knowledge about the players. I have more knowledge about kind of the team needs. Yeah. So starting off here with number one for Jacksonville Jaguars, I have them taking Trevor Lawrence, quarterback from Clemson. The popular pick, this is the one kind of everyone chooses, but for good reason. Lawrence is a very well-built prospect. Um, Mason, do you agree with this pick before I put it in? Um, absolutely not. No, I'm kidding. I agree with this pick. It's a, <laughs> yeah, it's a great no, – this is a no-brainer right here, yeah. Um, I will say this. I'm a bit – lower on Lawrence than some other people. A lot of people love him and people like he's going to be this fantastic player. But my issues with Lawrence is the fact that he in this today's NFL, you have to extend the play. I don't think he brings that to the table all the time. I I think his floor is like a Derek Carr where he's a good quarterback has fantastic plays here and there, but solid. And I think his ceiling is like Aaron Rodgers, one of the best of the best. So um, I'm not on as high as Lawrence as other people, but I still think he's great and he's the best quarterback in this class. So, Mason, who do you have the Jets picking with number two? With number two, it's kind of hard because Jets have a lot of needs as they're one of the worst teams in the league, but – you know, a lot of people want to go Zach Wilson, which I could see. But honestly, I would go Penny Sewell for them just because I feel like if they have Mekhi Becton and Penny Sewell as your tackles for the next 10 years, you're going to have an elite offensive line. And I know they might like Zach Wilson, which I could definitely see that pick being there. But I feel like you got to give Darnold maybe one more chance. And Penny Sewell is known to be a generational tackle. So I just it's just hard for me to pass on him at two. So that's a very interesting thing because most people have them taking quarterback. I, if, and then the people who don't, they have them taking a wide receiver, but I actually like that OT um, move. So we're going to go Penny Sewell. I could actually see that happening. So shaking things up. Um, do you think that Robert Sala, do you think that hire changes the fact that Darnold will get another chance? 
Um, I think it could. I feel like Robert Saul is always, always about giving guys a chance to prove themselves. I feel like he's a coach that gets the most out of his players. So I could definitely see Robert Sala because Sam Darnold still has the potential there, just has yet to be untapped. And I think Robert Sala could, uh, you know, he could still – he can give him a year or he might just be like, you know, we're going to move on. And so I'm the new coach, I'm the new quarterback. But, yeah, one of those options. All right, I like that. Pick three. Uh, we're going to go with the – Chase, wide receiver out of LSU. Uh, you got to help Tua, very young quarterback, very promising in my opinion. I think if you have Chase with Mike Isiki and Devontae Parker, you have a top 10 offense. Uh, Mason, do you agree with that? Um, I think there could be a debate being made between Chase and Smith. I think it depends on what kind of receiver you want. In my personal opinion, I would go with Smith just because I feel like he's a more crafty receiver and he knows – He's got the fundamentals. Chase is definitely a great pick here, so I wouldn't mind uh, the Dolphins getting him. But either way, it's a good pick. I think the Chase pick's good, in my opinion. All right. So you have kind of the tougher picks this video. Yeah. Uh, number four, the Falcons. What are you doing here? Because there's a lot you could do. The Falcons, uh, okay, this is what – I think this will happen. I think the Falcons are going to go and take either A – Micah Parsons or be a quarterback and I'm going to personally go with a quarterback I think Matt Ryan is making a lot of money and I think the Falcons are trying to move on from him and probably rebuild with their new uh head coach and uh Arthur Smith yeah and I the quarterback I would go with is Justin Fields in my opinion he goes back home to Georgia he has a lot of work to do but I think if you sit him behind Matt Ryan if you do keep Matt Ryan around Justin Fields next year could be phenomenal yeah, so I, uh, I'll make the pick for Fields. Um, as you can see, the pick is in. Um, here's my thing with that. Um, I like Zach Wilson a lot. Wilson is my number two quarterback. I actually like more traits. I think Wilson had better traits than Trevor Lawrence, so it goes Lawrence, then Wilson. However, with that being said, though, I think Justin Fields is a perfect fit for the Falcons, or near perfect, sitting behind Matt Ryan. You have Arthur Smith. I think it would be smart if the Falcons took a quarterback here because, as many people have said, you're not going to really get that chance to be, I think, in the top four again. So I'm going with – the. Uh, I, I'll agree with you with Justin Fields there. Uh, I have the Bengals at five. Uh, this is a tough one for me because I thought, you know, I've, I've watched some Joe Burrow tape, and I really am impressed with him. I wasn't going to go offensive line, but uh, that didn't happen with the Penny Sewell pick we have. I could see a Jaron Waddle and Devontae Smith, but they have Tyler Boyd and T. Higgins. I'm going to go with Kyle Pitts here. Pitts is super hyped up, tight end out of Florida. I think you can move him around the field. The Bengals don't have an excellent tight end. They have some good playmakers, but I really like uh, Kyle Pitts to Cincinnati, and I think he's worth a top five pick, in my opinion. So, Mason, where do you kind of fall on Pitts to the Bengals? No, I, I completely agree with you. I think the only uh, chance the Bengals take a wide receiver if it is Jamar Chase just because it, it brings back Burrow and Chase together. But I think Pitts is a great pick here because Pitts is a mismatched nightmare. Um, you can play him on the outside. You can play him on the inside. He's super quick, has great possession catching, great uh, contested catching. And I think if you get a guy like him for Burrow to grow with for the next 10 to 12 years, that's going to be a scary duo in the league. And I like Devontae Smith, but I definitely don't think that's the right fit for this offense. I think they need a guy who can go up and snatch the ball. Like yeah, Brandon. also, the way Burrow can pinpoint the ball, um, he can put it – he likes to put it in traffic, and I think Pitts is someone who can really adjust to that. I could see that happening in real life. Mason, who do you have uh, with six for the Eagles? Six for the Eagles, I – I'm torn between Devontae Smith and Michael Parsons. I think Eagles I think Eagles need both of those positions very badly. I'm going to go Micah Parsons, though. I feel like they've been neglecting the defense for quite some time. And Micah Parsons is one of the best linebacker prospects, not just this year, but in the past five years. And I think um, 
the Eagles desperately need like a playmaker on defense, just like um, to pair along with like Fletcher Cox and someone like that. And I think Micah Parsons is such a good fit for here because he can cover tight ends. He can kind of play the slot. He can do a lot. He's kind of like Isaiah Simmons. He can do a lot. Yeah. So this is interesting as an Eagles fan. I like and don't like this. I love Michael Parsons. He's super athletic. I think he's great. However, the Eagles have missed on wide receiver after wide receiver. But I do like your idea of addressing the defense. And there are some good wide receivers in free agency. You know, the Eagles don't have the money. You know what, Mason? I'll, I'll, I'll agree. I'll go Penn State. I could actually see that happening. That would be interesting. I think that would be a move a lot of fans would dislike, but I think Parsons has a potential to be top five at his position. So I'll agree with you there. And then um, with the Lions, I'm going to be, you know, the, the Lions are in a really bad position. Houston, both of the quarterbacks went out. Deshaun Watson, Matthew Stafford went out. And you have a lot of free agents. But – what I'm going with is I am going with a quarterback in Zach Wilson. I think Wilson fits the lines. Not only does BYU and Detroit have similar colors, blue and white, but <laughs> Wilson reminds me a lot of Stafford, extend the play, very smart. Uh, so I have Wilson falling all the way to seven. Um, what do you think of that, Mason? Yeah, I feel like if Wilson's at seven, that's a no-brainer for the Lions. They need a quarterback. Him and uh, Matt Stafford wants out. They don't really – they want to trade him. I think that's like a match made in heaven right there. Yeah, especially with Dan Campbell, who is, seems like a great guy. Um, I think that Wilson will fit a top quarterback because I think Campbell would want to have a young quarterback that he can kind of mold into the player he wants. Who do you have the Panthers at eight taking? Um, can you pull up the draft board real quick? I just like to get a yeah. quick glance at it. Sure thing. Definitely an interesting top seven. I oh, and this yeah. is an interesting class. Ooh. See the Panthers at eight. I I really want them to take a quarterback, but I I don't know if Trey Lance is worth that number eight spot. I really don't know. Same, but I could see it happening. I don't know. I honestly think. I would I would go Trey Lance here. They don't need a receiver. Um, Caleb Farley is a really good prospect, but I don't think that's a, a need for him. And Trey Lance, that would be a perfect – if you want to talk about perfect fits, Justin Fields or Trey Lance in that Panthers offense is a – like that's a great match uh, – like a gra- great match made. Um, I feel like Joe Brady could do wonders with Trey Lance. Um, I don't – I think it would be best to sit him for a year for sure. He definitely has, like, a lot of raw potential. He hasn't really faced a lot of competition. And who they have – they have Teddy Bridgewater, so that's a great person to learn from, in my opinion. So, yeah. Yeah, someone who watches the Panthers, I would like this a lot. I think that you need a new quarterback. Teddy kind of disappointed me this past season. Uh, I think Lance has that upside, but I think you need that. You look at Cam Newton – Sometimes Cam did not make the best decisions, but he made great ones. They were explosive. He got them to a Super Bowl, and I think you can get that with Lance. Oh, man, you all know me and the Broncos. I Just what are they doing here? I, am, I like their offense, but I'm not a Drew Locke believer. However, I do think that they take Patrick Satane here, corner from Alabama. Their defense is bad, and I think Vic Fangio will like him. Um, and with some of the corners leaving, I like Sertain. Do you like that, Mason? Yeah, Sertain's a good pick. Uh, they really – I mean, maybe they would go a quarterback if there's one available, but there's definitely not one available here. And I feel like they want to give Drew Locke another chance. And uh, Sertain, in my opinion, is the best cornerback prospect. And the Broncos used to have a really – great defense and I feel like they want to build that back up so I really like that pick yeah and Denver is a great organization in terms of players they don't really have any drama and I just feel like Sertain's a great player a great character I really like him and I think that's a good fit um I could see them maybe going Mac Jones quarterback but we'll go Sertain who do you have the Cowboys taking at 10 Cowboys um 
I would go with Caleb Farley out of Virginia Tech. I think they desperately need defense. Um, they definitely do not need a receiver. That is their least um, concern. And Farley, I feel like that's a good fit. They they need some secondary help. They need any help on defense. They were one of the worst defenses of all time last year. So I think Farley is a great pick for them. I love that pick so much. I was like, yes, when you made it. I love Farley to the Cowboys. I think this could happen. He fits so well um, with that team defensively. So I love that pick. Um, I have a Giants at 11, another NFC East team. This is really tough because I think that the Giants' defense was good. I do think the offense could be better. And with Devontae Smith here, the wide receiver from Alabama, he won the Heisman, right? Yep. And I think he goes to the Giants. Just an excellent playmaker. Help out Daniel Jones. I think that is, you know, this is an offense that has some pieces, but New York Stephens is great. You need to capitalize with a good offense, and I think Smith will help that Giants offense. So, Mason, are you a, a fan of this pick? Yeah, if Giants are able to land Devontae Smith at 11, every Giants fan in New York should be extremely happy. He is, he is such a good receiver. He was – amazing this year um, in college he got he just gets open no matter what he scores touchdowns like it's it's just he's a, such a good prospect I think Devontae Smith is someone who they need to replace Odell and I think that's a great pick yeah also I forgot to mention this but this is a no trade a mock draft in real life someone probably trade up uh, who do you have yeah. the 49ers at 12 going 49ers um this might be a tad bit reach but I would go JC Horn the Richard Sherman is, is going to leave in free agency um JC Horn I'm a big fan of actually he's a cornerback um he is a, a safety he is a fantastic player um he's very underrated he he kind of plays like Pat Pete where he's very good at man coverage good at pressing at the line um I think that's a great pick. I don't, it might Some people might think it's a reach, but I think he's a fantastic prospect. Yeah, I like that pick. I like Quorn. I have him going in like the 20s, but I, I think that's a respectable pick, and I like the point about the defense and Richard Sherman, especially with Robert Sala leaving. You need that defense to stay great. And then another California team, the Chargers, Rashawn Slater. Uh, he's still on the board, really great player, offensive tackle. The Chargers need that, and that's who we have. Uh, I have them taking. Uh, who do you have the Vikings at 14 going? I think the Vikings, this one's tough as well. I would honestly go Christian Darisaw. I'm a big fan of him. I think he could end up being the second-best tackle in this class. Um, and the Vikings, I think, I think they've been neglecting the O-line way too long, and I think – Derisaw is a perfect fit. You can place him at right tackle um, or left tackle. He can. He's a pretty much good wherever. I, I like that pick for him. Yeah, I really like it too. I like Kirk Cousins. He just needs more time, and I think that addresses that super well. Patriots, this is one of my favorite picks for mock drafts. You look at this team, this is a very defensive-orientated team, and I think Asante Samuel Jr., Junior cornerback from Florida State, son of Asante Samuel, fits the Patriots so well. That's such a Bill Belichick pick. I think you need corner. That is, for me, a pick that makes a lot of sense. I think he's either going Patriots, Cardinals, or Raiders. I think he's going the next three, and I have him going to New England at 15. I think the Patriots go defense here. If Micah Parsons is still on the board, I think he goes, but – New England, I think that would be a really good fit. Yeah, I like that pick a lot. Um, I, there's a lot of rumors that Stephon Gilmore could be traded this uh, offseason or J.C. Jackson could walk. And I think it's just such a perfect storyline that Asante Samuel, former Patriots player, gets to go play. His son gets to go play for uh, his dad's team. I think that's a really cool storyline, and I really like that pick. I, I didn't know Asante Samuel played for the Patriots. Interesting. Who do you have the Cardinals at 16? 16, this would be a dream pick. I would love the Cardinals to grab Jalen Waddle, wide receiver, Alabama. Um, DeAndre Hopkins and Jalen Waddle would be a 
that would be a matchup nightmare. Um, Jalen Wall is extremely good. He was, in my opinion, the best Alabama receiver before the season started, but then he got injured, so he really didn't play that much, and Smith just had a fantastic year. But Jalen Waddle is not very far behind Smith. And I think the Cardinals desperately need another receiver because Larry might retire. It's very likely. And Christian Kirk's good, but I don't think he's a number two option. I like that pick. It's definitely, I would say, a riskier pick because I think the Cardinals could go O-line or defense more. But I do like your reasoning. I think it helps Kyler Murray. Waddle is definitely different than Hopkins. So it would be a very different playmaker. The next pick... We start off this different players, and I feel like the last couple picks have been kind of quote unquote basic. I'm going with, I think it's going to be very shocking. I have the Las Vegas Raiders at number 17 taking quarterback Mac Jones. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> There's been a lot of rumors about Derek Carr, what's his future. People thought last year Tom Brady was going to the Raiders. Did not. Um, I think that Jones is a really good quarterback. He seems like a John Green quarterback. Mac Jones doesn't have the upside as the other quarterbacks. But I think he's very skilled. A lot of people say the Niners would be a good selection. I do, but Kyle Shanahan, I think, wants to give Jimmy G another year. I don't see that happening with the Raiders. I think Derek Carr could get traded next season, and I think Mac Jones is the pick. Mason, what do you think of that? <laughs> Honestly, the more you talked about it, the more you convinced me. I actually kind of – that actually kind of makes a lot of sense. I think Mac is like a perfect prototype John Green quarterback. Um, I think John Green likes his pocket passers, and that's all Mac Jones is. He cannot move out of the pocket whatsoever. He's not mobile whatsoever. But I think, I think Derek Carr – the Derek Carr experiment's over in Las Vegas pretty soon. I think John Gruden, like, loves Derek Carr, but I just think he's like I, – I can't win a championship with this guy. So, I, I actually like that pick. Thank you. It's very risky, but the more I thought about it, because Mac Jones, he's like, for me, not the best, but he's not the worst quarterback. Um, I could see it happening. I think that would be a shocker. And, yeah. Who do you have the Dolphins at 18 going? Dolphins at 18. Let me look at the prospects. Go to all real quick. Let me. I'm honestly – okay, so Quiddy Payne's not a bad pick, but they have some solid edge rushers. I really, really like um, Elijah Vera Tucker. Uh, he is the – He's a, he says he's listed as a tackle, but he really plays guard. Um, I think he's the best guard in this class. I think he has – he has Pro Bowl – I think he could be a Pro Bowl player. Like, he's – I think he's that good. And I think Dolphins, they address wide receiver. I think their defense is kind of fine. They addressed that last year. Their defense played pretty good. They got the wide receiver for Tua, and I think if you just give Tua more protection, that's all you need. Yeah, I like that. Um, pick, I agree, give Tua help. That's the big focus. Number 19, the Washington football team. This is an interesting one because there's a lot of – places you could go with this one the defense is great in terms of the front and I think that overall the defense is you know good I think that the offense has some pieces that could get filled and today we'll be going with the likes of None other than another shocker pick. We're going to be going Kyle Trask, QB out of Florida. I think that Washington could use a QB. So that's who we have, 19, Mason. Who do you have the Bears taking at 20? Bears picking at 20. Go to the the draft board real quick. Okay. Pick 20. Bears, there's an interesting team, actually. There we go. Let's see. The Bears go to all real quick. Let me see the prospects. I think I have some names in mind, but. Actually, everyone, I'm going to be doing the Bears pick in part two of the mock draft. I don't want to go too much over time. Yeah. And plus, our meeting time expires in like nine minutes. So I don't (laughs) don't want it to have a crash mid session. 
So give me more time to think about the pick. <laughs> yep. Uh, we'll pick up right for part two. But here's what we have so far: Lawrence, Sewell, Chase. I really like those three. I think Fields, Pitts, Parsons. Not the typical mock draft, but sometimes those unusual picks happen. Mm-hmm. I like where we have the quarterbacks going. Overall, this is what we have, and we'll see you all in part two. Bye-bye.